Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for September 21st, 2015. This week, I want to go over one of the basic concepts of technical analysis, and that is trend lines and how they work. Now, I'll show you this graphically in a moment, but let's start with a few key points. Upward trend lines are drawn across rising bottoms. So really what you look for are the little pullbacks that make lows, and if they are rising from left to right, then you have rising bottoms draw a line across those and you have an upward trend line. Downward trend lines are the opposite. We look for the falling tops and draw a line across those falling tops to establish the downward trend line. Now some simple rules. When prices run away from the trend line, we expect price to eventually come back to that trend. When prices come into the trend line, we expect prices to reverse at the trend line. So. If a stock is moving in an upward trend and it runs up a little too quickly, it'll probably pull back to that straight upward trend line. And eventually, when it gets to that trend line, it will bounce, reverse, and continue in the upward trend. If, however, the trend line is broken, well, that often precedes a reversal. So let's look at a chart of Apple to highlight this. Now, this is a three-year weekly chart. You can see on the left, we had a downward trend. Price ran away and it came up, and it ran away, and it came up to the trend line. It ran away, and eventually it came up. Now, here in April, it broke the downward trend line, and that preceded a longer-term reversal. It took a couple of months, but eventually Apple went into an upward trend, and again, you can see it runs away, it comes back. It runs away, it comes back. And actually, the trend got steeper here. You can see a number of occasions it ran away from the trend line, it came back, it ran away, it came back. But earlier this year in the summer, it broke that steeper upward trend line and it then proceeded to pull back to the longer term, shallower trend line. All you have to do to find these trend lines is look for these high and low points. If it's in an upward trend, look for the inflection point lows, the points where price stops going down, starts going up, stops going down, starts going up, and just draw a trend line across those points. It's helpful because we can establish where the market will probably reverse. When the market was correcting about a month ago, we had that morning where there was a thousand point sell off on the Dow and price went far below the trend line. It was able to come back and hold that trend line and it's held it ever since. Now we could still roll over, come back and break down through that trend line. If we get a weekly close through that trend line, then we would have to be fairly bearish on the shares of Apple. But for now, they remain in a long-term upward trend, but because they ran away so much from the trend line, they're gonna take some time to sort out when the next leg of the upward trend is gonna continue. I expect it'll be a few months before we see Apple finally break through to new highs because it's digesting all of this profit-taking that happened through the summer. All right, let's get into this week's market analysis. Here is the chart of the S&P intraday going back 30 days on a 60 minute interval. You can see we were building a nice ascending triangle pattern. We talked about that last week. We actually broke out early this week. Here's when the Fed announced that they were not raising interest rates. The initial reaction was up. But as often happens, the initial reaction in the market after the news on Fed announcements typically is wrong. And the next hour we saw prices move back down. And then today we gapped down on the open. Now I've tried to draw the uh, ascending triangle bottom as liberally as I could. And in past weeks, I was drawing it a little bit tighter, but I tried to give it all the benefit of the doubt. And you can see that right now we're right at that upward trend line. Now, we have to remember that on Friday was uh, options expiration, triple witching, and maybe even quadruple witching. I can't remember if it was everything expiring or not, but that brings in a lot of volume and a lot of volatility, and it can kind of taint the message of the market. So it's going to be real important to watch what happens on Monday whether that green short-term upward trend line can hold or not. Um, my expectation is that it will, but uh, I think it's a tough one to call and I want everyone to be cautious until that green line is held. Now, longer term, and I haven't drawn this long-term trend line like this uh, in, in some time. Normally, I just draw it as a three-year trend, but I decided to show you the five-year trend this year or this uh, week because we can go back a little farther to again find some longer term inflection point lows to establish the really long term trend line which has actually held so far. So again, this is going back five years. Now if you do the three year, 
we drew it across these bottoms, which we've done in past weeks, we saw that that one was broken. And that took us down to the longer term, somewhat shallower trend line, which so far has held. What we want to watch for real critical in the weeks ahead is if this longer term green trend line is broken. If we actually get a close below it, you know, here we went below, but we didn't close below. That's why it's green. It closed up here. If we actually get a candle that closes below this long term upward trend line, then I think we're in for a little bit of a bear market. And so we want to keep a close eye on that for now. I remain optimistic, but I want everyone to be cautious until we see that hold up. The uh, Russell 2000 uh, made a breakout uh, early this year, kind of failed, fizzled out, got pulled back into the trend. It's really been a, a sideways market for almost two years. Not a lot going on in the small caps. If you're a, more of a speculative investor, you don't need me to tell you that. It's been a little bit of a, a grinder's market in the last little while. You know, biotech has been the only thing where there's been some decent uh, alpha uh, in the small caps. But again, this week, we rallied up to that downward trend line that has held up since uh, June and got stuck. And uh, until we can break that little red line, I think you got to be fairly selective in the small cap space. TSX is in a pennant pattern. We tried to break out of the pennant on the uh, Fed news. It went up for an hour, came right back and closed below. And then again, on Friday, we were back into the pattern at the lower boundary of the pattern. I, I still think this is an okay uh, setup if we can break out of the pennant. But of course, if we break down through the red line, then we got to take a cautious stance. So next week is critical because we're at the pointy end of the pattern. And uh, you want to watch to see if we break down or up out of this pennant pattern. Given that the trend into the pennant is down, in other words, back here, you can see the, the trend was moving lower into the pennant. That makes the possibility of a downside breakout a little greater than an upside breakout, probably a 60-40 split. So 60% chance we break down out of this, 40% chance we break up. What it does have to its benefit is, again, we've held that real long-term upward trend line. And yeah, it's tough to call. I think you still want to be real cautious with Canadian stocks. There's been a little glimmer of hope in some of the commodity sectors. The fact that the Fed didn't raise rates, you know, sort of helped the, the uh, U.S. dollar show some weakness. And that, of course, helps um, commodity-based markets like the Toronto Stock Exchange. Speaking of commodities, uh, a lot of the small cap commodity stocks list on the TSX Venture. It remains in a downward trend, but the bottoms are falling slower then the tops are falling. That's a pattern called a falling wedge. And it's actually a bullish pattern, but only if you break the resistance line. So the red line on this chart is resistance. If this market can break that line, then we might get a reversal. It's all going to come down to gold and oil and what it does. And what's critical to gold and oil is the U.S. dollar. So uh, if the U.S. dollar can get some weakness in the weeks ahead, that will give some support to those commodities. But that's a big if. And so I think you still have to be pretty defensive in that area. TLT, which is Treasuries, broke the downward trend a couple of months ago, but has been struggling to move higher. You know, everyone thinks interest rates should go up, and yet they fail to do so. Um, we've sort of been stagnant in interest rates, and really what happened this week is we basically closed where we were last week. So even though the Fed chose to do nothing, the bond market is still not sure about what it wants to do. Now remember, if this goes up, that means interest rates are going down. And everyone is expecting that the bond market should go down to reflect the expectation for higher interest rates. But, you know, the economy isn't doing all that well. The Fed has shown some concern about the global economy, recognizing that a strong U.S. dollar is really harmful to the emerging markets. And I think that's one of the things that goes into their decision. They, they look at their own economy and say, well, it's not ripping and roaring higher and the global economy is still suffering, so they're trying to keep their monetary policy um, fairly easy, and uh, that's keeping the U.S. dollar down, which is why the uh, bond market hasn't gone down. It's kind of holding where many thought it would move lower with interest rates moving higher. Here's that chart of the U.S. dollar. You can see this week uh, it had a little bit of weakness, fairly long tail on the uh, candle for this week, but it basically closed even for the week and basically where it opened. So not a real decisive move on the U.S. dollar this week. No message there. Until the U.S. dollar can break up through that red line, I don't think the U.S. dollar is going anywhere. And so that's somewhat supportive for commodities, but the U.S. dollar is also not showing a lot of weakness, so it's not really helping commodities either. Gold, uh, building a little bit of a rising bottom. That's encouraging if you are a gold bug, but I don't want to give you too much hope. 
until we break up through this red line. Don't get too optimistic about gold. Certainly uh, early in the week, there was a little bit of strength in some of the gold miners, but we've seen that before. They have one or two weeks of strength. You can see here, you know, you get two or three weeks sometimes. There's three weeks in a row of strength. But ultimately, that long-term downward trend remains intact until we break that long-term downward trend line. Be real cautious with gold. Oil uh, had a pretty good reversal week uh, four weeks ago when it hit a new low, closed well above its open. That's a bullish engulfing candle, strong volume. That's a sign that uh, often comes at a bottom, um, but it, we still have to break the downward trend line. I've talked a lot about this in my daily newsletter, and uh, you know we've taken a little nibble at, a, at one oil stock this week, but I don't think you want to be jumping into the oil stocks just yet, but there's some hope there. So uh, with some hope, maybe you can have, I personally have one position in the oil market, um, and because I do think that there are some early signs of a turning, but by no means am I a big bull on the oil market just yet, just taking a nibble at it. And finally, fear. Well, fear had a big jump up on Friday. You can see the VIX jumped up there, but it's still in a downward trend. Again, I think the options expiration on Friday was a little bit deceptive in, what it, in the picture it painted for the market on Friday. And so I'm looking to see what happens Monday to really get a sense of, of where the market's going to go. My, my sense is we open perhaps week on Monday and then rally back to close up and, and hold that pattern. Um, I do think, uh, I, I sort of favor that the market will be up next week, but it's far from certain. And so you gotta be cautious either way. We'll see how Monday goes and go from there. All right, so my ratings then, neutral both long and short term on US stocks, neutral long and short term on Canadian, bearish long term on gold and oil, but neutral short term. They are trying to make a little bottom, but they got a lot of work to do. Short term optimism was broken for stocks on Friday but options expiry may have tainted the results. Investors really lack confidence and they're still making the market precarious and deserving of caution. Keep risk low and slowly come back to stocks as conditions warrant. Oil and gold are fighting to make a base. We'll keep an eye on that. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for September 21st, 2015. Have a great week in the market and trade well.